Awesome. So the chart hasn't changed much since this is the last time we discussed. Uh, so it's currently in this uh, buy zone that I'm uh, looking at. It's forming a bottom here. It could be a an equal lows or like a lower high. Then I'm expecting it to go higher. Uh, yeah. So uh, again, like before I get into Matic, right? Like this is my usual thing. Uh, let me start with Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, the same, the, literally the same is happening in Bitcoin and I, the highs were stuck here. So we're going to probably, we were going to go down, but then started reversing again. So I'm expecting, uh, to, uh, we're going to sweep these highs again and maybe come down. I don't know, maybe even go higher. So but I'm personally, I'm still looking at it coming down, uh, to the 50 retracement level or probably in a very bearish scenario coming down to this level, right? Uh, and also, if you look at it, there's a uh, supply zone here. So, yeah, uh, I'm still leaning a little bearish on the extremely short term time frame. So this is so going by this structure. I'm expecting seller to, oh, sorry, the matic to do the same. Uh, just hover some while over here, consolidate, move sideways, and then go higher. Right, but then again, matic's kind of the the rebellion kind of uh, token. So it could go either way. So, yeah, but uh, from short, in the short term time frame, I'm, I'm a little bearish. I'm uh, expecting it to consolidate or maybe retrace a little. But in the mid to, actually in the midterm, I'm looking for it to rally uh, up to these levels too. Yeah. And if I were to long, then this is what I would probably take, right? So this is somewhere, yeah. This is something that I would be look. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a really good, to, I mean, uh, risk to return ratio right now, especially when considering all the other buy signals that, that you know, are, are being presented. I'm going to share my screen now for you guys yeah. to see, because uh, basically on the on the four hour chart, right, uh, I'm seeing a, a buy signal for Matic um, by the TD sequential indicator. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm seeing it right here on the on the daily chart, right? right on on top of support i mean the 50 day moving average act, acting as a significant support right there uh, we're seeing a buy signal right there and also in the four hour chart we're also seeing a buy signal of course i will have to like wait for a potential close above this descending trend line right here right to actually go into the bullish trade potentially targeting first 1.50 and then 1.72 of course right uh, whenever we look at this from the uh yeah from the daily chart there could be um uh, kind of like a descending wedge forming in here which also gives you a, a a bullish a bullish target of i believe around like 40 percent there's something uh, i believe that sarah and i were looking at earlier earlier today so yeah, we're looking at a potential 37% target upon the break of the descending trend line right here, which could throw it to around two dollars. But going all the way to two dollars would not be that easy, based on the um, on the in and out of the money around price model, because it sees a lot of resistance right between 142 and 148, which is kind of where the the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level sits, right? so basically we'll need to close above this on the daily on the four hour to kind of like confirm a potential breakout right um based on the global uh in and out of the money basically uh, we need to close about one 160 right which is like this air er this uh area of supply right here right before we can potentially jump all the way to 176 which is uh the next significant area of resistance that the uh, IOMAP is is showing me. I'm not seeing any 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 buy buy impression from the from the wells right now. Uh, as you guys can see, I mean, it seems like the these are the the ways the the one million to ten million bracket um, for Matic wells seems to be the one most correlated with prices, as you guys can see right here but for right now i'm not seeing any buying pressure coming from this well 30d 
has uh, fallen into the opportunity zone, which is also kind of like adds a little bit of credence to what we're seeing from a technical perspective. But I would love to see some uh, buying pressure coming from from these wells. Um, I don't know about about you, Sheldon. Are you seeing are you seeing something different than this? Uh, before we actually switch over to Sheldon, I yeah. uh, wanted you to show this visualization of uh, the global IO map thing. Yeah, go ahead. Just one sec. Right. So, from the uh, global IO map, right? I this level mm -hmm. uh, is the one that you see here, and the one before it, the shorter one, is uh, the smaller one, is this here. Right, and the support that we see here is all the way down here if you were to visualize it this way right so this is the only reason why i'm still not overly bullish in matic i'm expecting it to uh sweep these lows right collect a uh, liquidity from here and then go higher right so i'm a little cautious uh it could dip here it could even dip uh this low so but i'm not quite sure yet right so bitcoin is still recovering and like I'm, I'm expecting a pullback from bitcoin which hasn't completed yet so yeah I, I have a question for you if you go back to the global yeah. uh, so basically i mean you, you're seeing right there a lot of support right from 140 all the way down to 34 cents right that's a massive area of support right there right uh, are you talking about this one yeah, I'm talking about that one and the and the next one to it to the left, right? So the mm -hmm. the support you can you can tell that the support expands, right? I mean, or, yeah. or the or the or the demand barrier is expands, right? Where a lot of people bought from thirty four cents all the way up to one point forty, uh, yeah, one point fourteen cents, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, so yeah, it, to me it also like. Basically, right now where it's currently trading at, where you can see uh, that gray, uh, that gray circle right there, right, uh, which it tells you that it's between one point fourteen to one point sixty nine, right. So basically, uh, close above or below that uh, that level, those two levels right there, mm -hmm. for me will kind of like you know confirm or or deny the the bullish outlook. Mm. Yeah, that, that could work. Again, like I said, right, like we could just bounce off of this uh, low right now, create a higher low and then go higher. It's completely plausible, right? Uh, but just me being on the safer side and a little paranoid of my, me getting my stops uh, triggered, right? So I would generally want to enter somewhere here, a little below this. Uh, this would be the perfect place to enter, enter for me, right? So yeah, that's what I think. Interesting, interesting. What, are you, what about you, Sheldon? What are, what are you seeing? Good morning. Yeah, let me um, bring up my screen. I pretty. I don't have a lot to add uh, with regards to this. It's just uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that there's the 200 or 2021 rising trend line that comes up here at about 105. Wow. I mean, one of the things that's interesting here is that you had on the eighth and the ninth you had two dojis here, which, which came at the 50 day moving average. One doji is pretty much a neutral event. When you have consecutive ones and they happen at support, it could mean, it mean, mean a, a, cha a reversal in the trend. We didn't have, we haven't seen that yet because we had a down day yesterday of about eight and a half percent. And today we're sitting once again on the 50 day, which is consistent with the personality of, of uh, Matic. We saw it here basically hold the 50 and then along here we also saw in, in April around the 50 days so at this point you know I'm looking for a daily close above this trend line uh, ideally above the eighth which would be 1.67 uh, to trigger a buy signal and then of course on the downside we have the 50 day and we have the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement of the bounce from the May low uh, which also provides support then of course the trend line so I mean, any weakness down to the sixty-one point eight or, or or towards the trend line definitely is a good risk reward area if you want to buy before getting above the trend line. Otherwise, I'd wait for a daily close above uh, above the trend line to to take a position. As far as the weekly and monthly, there really isn't much to show on those on those two charts. 
And also one of the things you notice here is that during this decline from, I guess, May 25th, 6th, sorry, is there's just been no rush to the exit. So people are not dumping Matic at all here. Uh, they're just basically going with the flow of the market. There's nothing individual about or specific to the, to the cryptocurrency the, in terms of uh, the selling. So it's just a matter of a change in the environment and this should be gone. And I would suspect this move up to here will be relatively quick. It coincides with the highest close, which goes back to May 18th and the highest close there was uh, 244. So that'll be a resistance level. You'll see it there comes into play and it failed both times there. And then off to the races above there and to the top side trend line, which extends way up. So you're talking about the 168 uh, or 161.8 percent Fibonacci extension of of the May decline that comes in at four over five. Wow, uh, that's that's like uh like uh how much percentage? Do you do you mind like measuring that? Yeah. So basically a break of one well one point sixty seven first. Is that what you we'll said? Say like a breakout above we'll say here mm -hmm. one sixty seven, it's like about two hundred percent. Interesting, yeah. Nice. That's really nice. I mean it's what? Yeah, go ahead. One of the things that I, you know, I have a concern with Matic is, is it's gone from an emerging story, not overly covered, to like a dominant front page story now for the last three weeks, even a month. So one of the things, you know, when sentiment gets so, such a bias, when you have that group think that everybody's like bullish on something, and they think it's going to go a lot higher, I, you know, it's a, it's a yellow flag, it's not a red flag, but a yellow flag that you know, maybe a lot of this has been priced in and and maybe we're going to go through a longer topping process or consolidation and maybe we might anticipate at this point. Yeah, 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 definitely. Right. Like when, when the crowd pays too much attention, then it's, it's not it's not good. Right. But when the crowd is not paying attention at all then it's, it's, it's actually good but i i do believe that this is a, a good uh, risk to reward ratio you know if, if you're if you're planning to to kind of like play the the ribbon from the 50 day moving average or maybe that that uh, trend line right there because because you could place your stop loss like around 90 yeah like around 90 cents is that right which mm -hmm. would be where are, you, where are you risking right there? No, I'm just saying, say, for example, it came down and touched the 2021 uh, rising trend line. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're looking at about 20% downside risk from where price is trading right now to achieve, you know, if you're talking equities, that actually would seem like a lot. But, and if you go from where price is now, you're talking about about an 80% move to the upside. So the risk reward scenario at current price levels is uh, pretty good. Yeah, four to one. See. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty interesting, you know. I mean, with those buy signals, I mean, all all I'm waiting for personally is uh, for Wells to to get back to it, right? I want to see a spike in in the in the number of uh, addresses holding one million to ten million Matic. Um, that will basically give me an extra sign of confirmation that this thing could potentially rebound but uh but yeah yeah that's that's the that's the last thing that i that i'll be waiting for but but yeah it seems like one right of the, yeah, one of the things that's good about good about this is that it, everything's very clear mm -hmm. so you can be very mechanical about how you approach this in terms of the downside and the upside it, it you know there's no vagueness there there's no maybe if it's very clear yep yep definitely so so yeah really really good defined you know support our resistance levels it's, it's crazy that also that that descending trend line at 167 coincides with what we were seeing in the in the global io map right which was like around 169 so a close above that will kind of like a daily close above about 1.69 or 1.67 will kind of like confirm the uptrend while a downswing below the 50 day ma uh, then we'll be looking at uh, uh, you know that rising trend line from 2021. Yeah, beginning but, of 2021. But yeah, basically a close below one dollar will basically throw us back to the 200-day moving average, right? 
which is sitting at or maybe not the 200 day but maybe that uh, swing think, low yeah, yeah exactly 19 mm -hmm. may, may 23rd low exactly which comes in uh, 74 cents 74 cents exactly exactly 